All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some uh, differential equations here. So uh, differential equations just means they have derivatives in them. So we're going to be looking at derivatives. And this is the last section here. This is going to be awesome. So here is a differential equation. I've got the derivative. Remember that dy dx is just like a y prime or an f prime. We have the derivative. Same old, same old. We're going to try to find what is the original function. Check this out, though. It's kind of like implicit. We have x and y over here. I say implicit. How about implicit? It's like implicit differentiation backwards. So we've got the x and the y over here. Can we find the antiderivative? We're going to learn a pretty cool technique here called separating the variables. So how do you do that? Well, we're going to split up this dy dx. We're going to get all our y's on one side and all our x's on the other. So I want to get my y's together. So I'm going to times this side by y. Whatever you do one side, you got to do the other. So we've got dy dx. And then here's kind of the weird part. Uh, I can split up my derivative here. I'm going to times this side by the dx dx. So they're gone. So I'm looking at this y dy x squared dx. And what's cool about this is now we can integrate. So on this side, I'm integrating with respect to y. And then on the other side, I'm integrating with respect to x. Boom, there it is. So let's go ahead and do that. What's going to happen when I... Uh, Take the antiderivative of this. I'm just going to get bump it up one to y squared, divide by that number. And you do introduce some constant we don't know. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here and bump it up one, divide by that number. And I get a constant. You could call this C2, I guess. If this is C1, I get another constant over here. So I'm adding that constant in there. So now what I'm trying to do is I want to find what is y. You know, I have y prime, what is y? So I got to get y by itself. So what's going to happen here? Well, First thing I would probably do is subtract this constant, but what happens when you subtract constant 2 from constant 1? Do you get constant 3? I don't know. You get another constant. So really, we didn't have to do all that. We're, it's still going to be a constant, so we kind of got to wrap our brain around this uh, idea of that it's just a constant. So C2 minus C1 is still just some constant. I call it C3 if you want. That makes you happy. But usually, we don't even write that C. We just put it over on the right side because when you subtract them, you get another constant over here. Let's just finish this bad boy out. Times both sides by 2. So you get y squared equals 2 thirds x cubed. And again, you could write 2c, but there's no reason to write 2 times a constant. It is still a constant. And then the finale, what do we got to do? We got to square root both sides. So I'm looking at my y, the equation would have been the square root, and it is plus or minus, I don't know which one, 2 thirds x cubed plus c. And that c is under there. I got kind of lazy on that. Sorry about that. My b. Uh, so there is the original function. So I just solved that differential equation. I did something called separating the variable. So we're going to do a lot of separating here. Uh, and that's the uh, antiderivative. Pretty awesome, huh? Let's try it again. So let's just do another one. So uh, what you'll quickly probably notice is that these are always going to be some kind of multiplication or division. It doesn't really work with addition or subtraction because look at this first step. first thing I got to do over here is divide both sides by y squared. So I got to get my y's over here. So I'm looking at y squared dy, bring the dx over, it's sine x dx. So you can probably do that in one step once you do enough of these. Then we're looking at what what is the uh, integral of y to the negative 2 with respect to y over the integral. And I put a little trig function over here, kind of mix it up. It's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and solve these. So take the antiderivative, bump it up one, divide by that negative, divide by negative 1. I, I'm not going to put the plus C here because I'm just going to take it over here and do it over here. So what's the antiderivative of sine? I think it's negative cosine, yeah? Make sure you got the negative in front. And now there's the plus C. So you can put it over here and move it, but whatever. You're going to get a constant. Uh, I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just going to put it over there. So now once you have this, remember our whole goal is to solve this is find the antiderivative, find the original function. This is the derivative. So this looks weird. This is a really weird one. This is like one over negative 1 over y equals negative cosine plus c. So I'm trying to solve for y. So the first thing I would do is times both sides by negative 1. Well, when you do that, this will become positive 1 over y. And that becomes plus cosine minus a constant. But again, that constant could already be negative. Who knows? We can just put plus c. Love that constant. And then now the last thing here is the easiest way I think about these. You can multiply both sides by y and divide is the long way. But I just get in the habit of I'm just going to flip it. So 1 over y. You know, this whole thing is over 1. You can flip that over. You can flip as long as you flip this side over. So as long as you flip them both over, you are good to go. If you don't like that or if you think I'm lying to you, um, don't hate. I don't know why you're hating. 
uh, if you got this, you could do all the steps here. You could say, okay, really, we should times both sides by y, and they cancel. Uh, and then you, what do you get? You get 1 equals this whole cosine x plus c equals y. So now what are you going to do? You're going to divide both sides by cosine x plus c. So there it is. I mean, you can show all those steps and do all that, but it's especially because we're going to get more complicated. When you get 1 over y, just put him over a fraction, flip them both, and you're good to go. Fantastic. We're cruising. I thought this was going to be a long video. Let's see. Oh, okay. we got we got to step it up here. Uh, so now this has been generic. We've been finding, you know, plus C generic um, antiderivatives. Now I want to solve for Y with the initial value. I'm going to give you something from the original function. I'm going to give you some points. So now we can actually evaluate it and tell me the equation. So this is pretty cool. So if I have my derivative, I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. So um, let's go ahead and square them both. And again, to get this bad boy going, I need Y of Y's over there. So I'm going to divide by Y squared. So it's 1 over Y squared and they cancel. So I've got 1 over y squared dy, bring that dx over here, and it looks like this. Now let's integrate here. So I've got y to the negative 2 dy equals the integral of this. Fantastic. So it's the same old, same old, same thing we had just been doing. Uh, let's go ahead and finish this. I'm going to bump it up 1. Oh, i got the same kind of issue here, don't I? To negative 1, divide by that negative 1. This will turn into x cubed and then divide by that 3, so you get a 1 third, and plus the C. So here's what I like to do. As soon as I get that plus C, I'm not going to solve it for Y. I'm actually going to plug those numbers in. It just seems way easier if you can do it right off the bat. If I do anything, maybe I'll just rewrite this as negative 1 over Y, just so it looks a little, a little nicer here. But don't go ahead and solve for Y. I mean, you can, but it ends, you end up kind of giving yourself more work. So if I plug in 1 and 1, they're both 1. Uh, so if y is 1, it's negative 1 over 1. That's cool. And then the x value is also 1 cubed. So what is my c value here? I'm looking at negative 1 equals 1 third plus c. So if I solve that, subtract your 1 third, subtract 1 third. I'm looking at negative 1 and a third, negative 4 thirds. So then I go back to where I was here. So this was my generic, and maybe this one's, let's just continue that area. This one's a little bit nicer. I go back to this. Um, this equation I had with the plus c, and then I plug the c in there. So, you know, we had all we didn't know where the plus c is, like where is that antiderivative at? But I now I know it's this is the particular solution. I knew the initial value. This is the real for real answer here, not just uh, one of the possibilities of answers. So again, that's what I was talking about. How let's get rid of that negative, but we got this one over y. It's going to flip the signs over here when you divide by the negative. And now this is what I was talking about. This is the old flippity flippity here. Uh, flip this side, you get y. Flip this side, you get 1 over negative 1 third x cubed plus 4 thirds. I'm probably pretty cool with that. I know fractions and fractions aren't the most ideal. But whatevs, I think that's pretty cool to get your point across. You could, I guess, get a common denominator and clean it up if you wanted to. But uh, I'm totally down with that. So as soon as you can, as soon as you get that C, I go ahead and solve for it instead of solving for y. Then you can go back and solve for y because we know what c is. That's it. All right, so let's kind of bring this all together here. So if I have another uh, differential equation here, remember this goes back to like uh, the first section on slope fields. You know, we can we can create a slope field of what is the derivative of every single point. You know, find the derivative of every point. You can do that by hand if you want, or I got I got it done. Look at that, it is all done right there for you. If you want to pause it and sketch mine, so I went ahead and drew the slope field for this thing. That was part a. Uh, this is kind of review stuff here. Write the equation of line tangent. So, boom, as soon as you see line tangent, you're thinking first derivative. Well, there's the first derivative right there. There's your dy dx. So we're we're golden there. And I know the point is 2 and 1. So you can just plug that in. So this is kind of review uh, stuff. So what's the derivative? It's 4. Once you have this, at this point, that's the slope of the tangent line. You can just make an equation out of it. So it's y minus the 1 equals 4 x minus 2. So that's old school. We've done that before. I just kind of want to call your attention to it again because now we're going to have the next level. And this tends to be a lot of like a total free response question on AP exam. You have the slope field, you've got the line tangent, and then I want to know the particular solution. So this is kind of a crazy looking slope field. I want to know the one that actually goes through the point 2, 1. So the point 2, 1 is right here. So I'm actually concerned about, okay, what is the equation line that goes through there? So it's kind of some craziness going on here. Uh, if you take a look at this, um, and even trying to draw this thing is going to be 
pretty rough in there um, to get the general shape. But let's go ahead and find the um, find that solution. So it's the same thing we were doing. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to solve this differential by um, separating the variables. So to separate the variables, I've got y equals uh, times dy equals 2x dx. So first thing, separate them. The next thing, integrate them. So if we integrate this, it's the integral of y and the integral of 2x dx. So let's actually go ahead and take the antiderivative here. So this becomes y squared, bump it up one, divide by that number. Bump this bad boy up one to two, divide by that, it cancels out, and you've got a plus c right here. So that's generic, that would be the generic antiderivative there, but we want the particular one at this moment in time. So as soon as I have c, I go ahead and find out what that c is. So right here, I'm gonna plug in two and one just to figure out what that bad boy is. So y is one, x is 2. Can we solve for c? Sure, 1 half of 1 is 1 half, and that's 4 plus c. So what is c going to be? c is going to be, uh, subtract that, minus 3 and a half. So c is going to be a negative 3.5. I get You can write as a fraction if you want. Either way is coolio. Um, so that's it. But is that the particular solution? No. Remember, i got to plug c back in here. So I'm going to rewrite it down here so we have plenty of space. So uh, we had 1 half y squared equals this x squared minus 3 halves right here. So now I'm going to solve it for y. So uh, solve this for y. You're gonna, I'm going to start off by multiplying both sides of the equation by 2. So they cancel. So I'm looking at y squared equals 2x squared minus 7. Um, so that's nice. And then what do I do here? I'm going to square root both sides. And when I introduce the square root, it's this plus or minus. So it's 2x squared minus 7. So careful on this bad boy here. So now when I have this plus or minus, uh, it's one of these. It can't be both the plus and the minus. So uh, because that wouldn't be a function, you know, if we, you know, when this plus or minus these square roots, you end up getting these sideways parabolas. They don't pass the vertical line test, blah, 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 blah. So I've decided. Hey, am I talking about when it's going through this point? Am I talking about the plus or the minus? In this case, what am I talking about? Definitely talking about the plus. So I don't need that minus. In fact, it's wrong if you put it there. This particular solution is y equals the positive. You could write the plus, I guess, if you just want to make sure. 2x squared minus 7. That is the particular solution. If it would have been 2, negative 1 down here, totally different equation then yes, you do need the negative in there. So the particular solution, if you want to graph it, is going to look something crazy. Uh, it's probably going to, it looks like it's this coming down slope right here, and then it's probably going to dis, uh, disappear. It can't be zero. There's no way it's going to be zero. So it's a piece here. Um, if I drew the negative, it would be, oh, we don't want that. What is that? If I drew the negative, it would be the part down here, but I don't want the negative. So you have to choose when it's plus or minus. So that's kind of tricky. If it's generic, who cares? You put the plus or minus, but when it's particular, if it's positive, you got to put the plus. That's kind of tricky. So some weird little tricky things in here. Make you think a little bit. Uh, last problem here. So I went ahead and drew a very, a very nice slope field. Um, and I, again, want the particular solution. So I just want to show you a little bit of E and some simplify. Oh, I remember this. This is going to have some simplifying in it. So let's go ahead and separate the variables because I'm looking for a particular solution. So I'm going to uh, divide both sides by this. So I'm looking for 1 over this bad boy here. Bring the dx over. It's ex dx. So now we need to integrate this thing. So once we separate it, and even on these free response, like you get points just for setting these up, like at least set these things up. You can give yourself two or three points just by separating them and uh, showing your work there. Uh, now, once we have it, let's. This one gets a little, uh, gets pretty fun in here. So, uh, this is a weird one, but how do I do this? This is the natural log. It's the natural log of the absolute value of y plus two. When I integrate that, integrate e to the x is my favorite. He stays e to the x, and I introduce that plus c. So. Uh, the idea here is first, I'm um, looking for a particular solution at 0, negative 1. It's this point right here. And it actually wanted me to sketch it first. Sorry, I'm out of order here. Could you sketch this thing? Yeah, sure. It looks like it's coming up through here and then somewhere it's going there. And I missed, so I'm just going to make that dot bigger. Now I hit, or I'll make the line bigger. There's the particular solution going through there. Something like this would be your, your particular solution. So I have it here. I'm going to plug the points in to find that C right off the bat. So I'm looking at the natural log 
of what? Negative 1 plus 2 and e to the 0 plus c. So the natural, this looks like the natural log of 1 uh, equals e to the 0, which is just 1, isn't it? Well, this is nice. What is the natural log of 1? It's the only natural log I know uh, easily. It's just 0. So 1, 0 equals 1 plus c. So what is c? c is negative 1. So I know c. I'm going to plug c back into here. Uh, this is where it gets a little cray cray here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you here. So let's check this out. So I had I'm gonna rewrite the natural log of absolute value of y plus two equals e to the x minus one. So I've got that going on. Now I need to solve this for y. So we're gonna need some space here. Let's solve this for y. So how do I get rid of a natural log? Well, you have to exponentiate it. You have to raise it to the e power, something like this. So what happens here? They cancel, and I'm left with y plus two. 2, and this is going to be e all raised to the e to the x minus 1. So you may be asking yourself, Mr. Brush, you forgot the absolute value. Intentional. They just kind of disappear at this point. <laughs> so we're kind of solving this. Uh, we have to make sure, you know, the natural log graph is always positive. It's always that positive graph. Uh, when I do this, absolute values get that plus or minus. It's just kind of always the positive one. Um, I wouldn't overthink it. I would just say, hey, we're cool. When we're solving this for y, we're only going to look at the positive version because it's the positive natural log there. Um, but now, let's clean this up a little bit. So this is pretty good. Um, this is some exponential rules going on here, though. So we can kind of clean this up a little bit. Is it going to be helpful? Mm, I hope so. <laughs> uh, I mean, right now we can just subtract two from both sides and be done. Like that's pretty cool if we do that. But a, a lot of times these are multiple choice and they're not going to really match. So we have to think back to our exponent rule. So if I'm multi, if I have a, a base to a power like x squared times, or I'm sorry, x to the seventh times x squared, what do you do? Well, you add these exponents, yeah. So if I'm adding exponents, uh, I'm doing, um, I'm doing this multiplication of x. Of sorry of the exponent so this is really going to be e to the x e to the, oh my gosh let's try it again e to the e x times e to the negative one so that's totally cool because if I add these together plus and minus uh, would give you that right there so that's cool is that helpful for us well do we know what e to the negative one is um, not really but we know it's one over we can do one over e and then we have e to the e x something like this. That's a lot of E's. Holy cow, that looks really weird. Is that more simplified? Uh, I, I guess. I don't know. In this case, if it is, I'm kind of regretting trying to simplify this at all. E to the EX and then minus your 2. Yeah, so this, it may look like this. This one didn't work out as, as friendly as I thought or I'd hoped it would. But you can rewrite this term and it comes out as the term in front when it's a constant like that. Probably not the best example to use. Uh, for this one, bummer. Uh, but you would have been okay if, if right off the bat if you would have subtracted your 2 up here and just said it's e to the e to the x minus 1 minus 2. That's also a perfectly legitimate answer, uh, something like that. Okay, so this answer right here is the equation of that big fat purple line I drew. That is the particular solution. That's the equation. Uh, I tried to simplify here, and I, I'm worried that I may have made things a little more confusing than they are, than they need to be. This one actually looks nicer in this case, but I can't end on that because I do want to show you the simplify, and I want you to be like, oh, Mr. Brush, you didn't show me how to simplify these. It is going to come up. Let me just real quick make one up. So jot this down on the side, in the margin somewhere. It seems like it always happens. Uh, let's see, I need one that uh, when I have something like this. So let's say it's 2xy. So let's say I'm I'm doing this problem here. And I'm just going to do it generically so you can see the simplification. Uh, if, when I bring my y over, so I've got this, and I'll bring my dx over, something like this. So uh, when I go to integrate both sides, and I'm going to kind of go fast here, just integrate both sides, it's when I get this natural log. So you get the natural log. The antiderivative of this is natural log of that. And bump this thing up, you get x squared plus the c. So here's where it gets can get a little bit weirder with a simplifying. So it's when I do this exponential. You get rid of natural log, I got to exponentiate. So you're going to do the whole side over here. And this cancels. So I, and again, the absolute value drops. So you get this y. And I'm, I'm in good shape. It's e to the x squared plus c. That's all up in the exponent. So this is the idea of when I'm adding these together, what am I really doing? Well, it really means e to the x squared times e to the c. So this is how you'll more likely see it, a pretty basic one right here. So 
Uh, remember, because of the, well, the rules of multiplication, when the same base, you add the exponents. And why is this so beneficial here? Well, what is e to the c? e to a constant is just a constant. So really, what happens here is you get e x squared times uh, that constant c again. So the c actually comes down, and then we put the c in front, and you're going to see this form a lot right here is the c actually comes out the front. So if you stopped here, yeah, it's right, it's okay, but if it's multiple choice, they're going to show it to you like this, and I don't want you to freak out when you see the c in front times in it. This is why. So it can even get crazy. Maybe you have three things in there you're multiplying out and, and rearranging and whatnot. So you'll see some in the practice. I just didn't want you to think I, I played you out and didn't give you that, that little nugget right there. It's a pretty good nug, um, so enjoy that. So uh, that's it right there. Good luck on the practice. If you need more, go check out the corrective assignment. I got a bunch there too, and good luck on the mesh check. Peace out.